the entire region is so huge and it's, the geography is so varied that different subregions will be facing different risks. So, for example, the coastal zones, particularly in the Caribbean, will be facing sea level rise. In the Pacific, although they will be also be facing sea level rise because of the type of tides they have, the impact might not be as severe as would be in the Caribbean. Then we also have the Andes, the Andes that goes from Argentina to, Argentina to Venezuela. Then uh, you have the problem with landslides. And we also have the problem that most of the water that fits the cities comes from the Andes and from glaciers that are melting really, really fast, or from very vulnerable ecosystems that we haven't managed to really understand well how they produce the water and how vulnerable are those ecosystems to climate change. So in one side we have the water availability and on another side we have, we don't know how the extreme events will change, if we are going to have more extreme events, what will be the frequency, what will be the magnitude. Then in coastal areas we have sea level rise and salinification of soils. And also we have the problem with food security. We don't know how our crops are going to be impacted by climate change. We, we have already seen that some crops that were traditional in the region are not producing as much as they used to be. This project started four years ago and originally uh, we wanted to identify good practices on adaptation and population dynamics across the region in order to share experiences that people from one country could see what other country were doing and not have the usual suspects presenting as you will see in the co-ops and in the international uh, conferences, you know, more or less see always the same organizations, whereas this project was about bringing good initiatives that do not have the capacity to lobby themselves out, and, but have been running for years and years without any, maybe without any, any light. I mean, light, I mean, like a propaganda light. It's more like it's projects that have been going on and they have achieving things, but mostly are local uh, initiatives. The, the first year, it was a bit difficult to find adaptation projects that you could say they have been running for so long that you can clearly say it's adaptation. But as, uh, as the years go by, like some projects were starting four years ago and you already see some, some success. But the most important thing, it's been that dialogue between world experts and local local professionals working at the local level. They, some of them are here today in Washington and they say that despite they go to a lot of workshops on climate change and adaptation in their country, it is very rare the occasion where they have access to speak with people that are leading experts in the topics and they can explain to them what are the pro problems, what are the issues. So it's an enhancing that, that dialogue between professionals and between experts and between uh, people that are trying to work out how to adapt to climate change. Oh, there's a, there's a huge gap to be closed. This, um, at, when you're in the field, you can see that people are, are already adapting, but if they could have broader access to, to more information or to new tools, then it would be faster. But, but they don't have the access to information. So I think we still need to work a lot on bringing, uh, bridging those, those gaps and bringing together professionals. Like, it was very interesting to see how we have somebody from LA, Los Angeles, coming to speak to Lima and how the two cities have similar historical paths and although the level of poverty is completely different, they are facing similar wa water scarcity issues. So it's that dialogue that we need to, to encourage. And there are other many activities and a lot of th actions, but we need to start creating awareness and we need to continue with this type of, of dialogues among professionals. there is a need for coordination among institutions. 
And there is also a crucial need for political will. So you can have all the technical aspects covered, but if you do not have the political will or you do not have the institution coordination or the capacity to implement, then all that information just stays there in a, in, in a shell. It is up to us, it's a human, the adaptation is a human problem, not a problem, but a human solution. It, it, has, it has to be driven by us, it has to be driven by good institutions, good capacity within the institutions and political will. And then we also need to promote good science and good information that can lead to good decision makers.